Storytime friends. I didn't expect to see you here. Do you know where I am? What does that look like to you? Can you tell? What are you hearing? I hear people talking and laughing. I hear birds. What's the big sound I'm hearing? Do you know what that is? So we are going to talk a little bit about ocean and beach animals this week because I couldn't bring you to the beach and then talk about desert animals. No. So we're going to talk about some of the animals you might see in the ocean. Um, now normally when I go to the beach, I don't get to bring you along, do I? But I thought this year, since things are a little bit different and we're doing story times from wherever I am. I thought you might like that we get to just do it here. I'm pretty excited about it too. Um, our first story today is going to be one that we had at our house. This is called Gilbert the Great. And it's by Jane Clark and illustrated by Charles Few. And it's from Scholastic. From the time Gilbert what kind of animal is Gilbert? Do you know what he is? Oh, he's a great white shark. From the time Gilbert the great white shark was a tiny pup, Raymond the Remora stuck to him like goo glue. Raymond was always at Gilbert's side. Do you see Raymond? When Gilbert was stuck in the seaweed, Raymond untangled him. When Gilbert got dirty, Raymond cleaned him up. And when Gilbert lost his first row of teeth, Raymond helped him collect them for the tooth fairy. All right. Do you see how they live together and work together? Yeah, they have something called a symbiotic relationship where two animals live together and need each other to stay healthy and clean. Gilbert and Raymond had lots of fun. They loved to play finball, hide and seek, and sardines. They shared everything. Then one day, Raymond told Gilbert that his family had to move across the ocean. I don't wanna go, but mom says I have to, cried Raymond. As Raymond and his family swam away, Gilbert's mother hugged him tight and tried to comfort him. Raymond is my best friend, said Gilbert. Why did he have to go away? It's not fair. I know, said Mom, but his family couldn't just leave him behind. She kissed Gilbert on the snout. Go and play tide and seek with the pilot fish. It will keep your mind off of Raymond. But Gilbert couldn't stop thinking about his friend. I want to move with Raymond, Gilbert said. He's moved too far away, said Mom. We have to stay here. Let's go watch the basketball game. The threshing threshers are playing the title tigers. Who do you want to win? Gilbert looked around. There were remoras everywhere, but none of them was Raymond. I don't care, he said, and he swam off before either side scored a basket. Oh no. It's my fault Raymond moved, Gilbert snapped as he passed an eel. Last week I called him a sucker. You didn't make Raymond leave, Mom smiled. Everyone fights sometimes. The clownfish did their best to cheer Gilbert up, but Nothing could make him smile. Do you see the clownfish? They're being pretty silly, huh? The next day at school, everyone was very kind to Gilbert. They even gave him an extra learn, long turn on the seesaw. Cheer up, said Marvin the mallet. There are plenty of fish in the sea. There isn't another Raymond, said Gilbert. Gilbert was still sulking when mom came to collect him from school. It's not the same without Raymond, Gilbert pouted. That night, Gilbert cried and cried and cried, and his warm tears mingled with the cold ocean water. The next morning, ooh, that's beautiful, isn't it? Mom took Gilbert gently by the fin and towed him into the shallow water. 
Rocked by the gentle waves, they stare down at the seashore and the bright blue sky. I hope Raymond's new home is as nice as this, said Gilbert. I'm sure it is, said Mom. I'm hungry, Gilbert said suddenly. We'll go to the wreck, said Mom. Gilbert's eyes lit up. They didn't usually go to the wreck. Mom didn't like him eating junk food. Do you get it? It's a shipwreck. Yeah. Let's see what else. <gasps> scrunch, much crunch. As Gilbert was biting into a pile of tin cans and old boats, he spotted a small remora crying in the shadows. Gilbert stopped crunching and swam toward her. Do you see her? She's kind of hidden. What's the matter? asked Gilbert. Mom and I moved and I had to leave my shark behind, she sobbed. Now I don't have any friends. My remora had to move too, said Gilbert sadly. I'm so lonely. Gilbert and the remora looked at each other and smiled wobbly smiles. I'm Gilbert, said Gilbert. I'm Rita, said the remora. Just then, a ray of sunlight filtered through the deep blue ocean. Gilbert's teeth flashed as he grinned a huge grin. Do you want to play finball with me, Rita? He asked. Sunlight danced in Rita's eyes. I'd love to, she said, and the two new friend, friends swam off to find a ball to play with. The end. Okay. Is that a real story that you think happened in the ocean? Probably not. I don't know of any fish that speak in words that humans understand, no. But there are a lot of fish that have symbiotic relationships where two animals work together so that everybody stays healthier. So that part was real, even though that part seemed like it was silly. And sometimes our friends really do have to move and that's really hard. It's hard to make new friends. We've had that happen in our family. I was thinking our next story goes to a tune um, called Over in the Meadow, but this one is Over in the Ocean in a Coral Reef, and it's by Marianne Burks, and it's illustrated by Jeanette Canyon. It's from Scholastic, um, and I wanted to make sure that I talked about the illustrator because Jeanette Canyon is from a, our part of the world. She's from Columbus which is super fun and I really love, she makes her art with polymer clay, which is very similar to Play-Doh in a lot of ways. Like the way that it works together is something that you could do with your Play-Doh. So I want you to be able to see these pictures. Look at that. To make these waves, she rolled out some of the clay and then swirled it up tight. For some of these, she has pictures on what's it where you can see how she makes these panels. Yeah. So this book is beautiful. I love looking at this book. I've been reading it for a long time and I still love looking at it. Over in the ocean, far away from the sun, lived a mother octopus and her octopus won. So she had one little octopus, number one. Squirt, said the mother. I squirt, said the one. So they squirted in the reef, far away from the sun. Look at that. Oh no, I had a picture of, a, or I had a piece of coral I wanted to show you. I'll have to look for it. I'll show you in a minute. Over in the ocean where the sea grasses grow, lived a mother parrotfish and her crew. Lived a mother parrotfish and her parrotfish too. Do you hear how I miss said the rhyming phrase? Yeah. Grew and two are rhyming words. They sound the same at the end. Grind, said the mother. We grind, said the two. So they ground on the coral where the sea grasses grew. Oh, do you know what this animal is? Over in the ocean in a sea anemone lived an old mother clownfish and her little clownfish. Three! Dart, said the mother. We dart, said the three. So they darted all around in a sea anemone. And what was three's rhyming word? 
<gasps> anemone, that's a hard one. Over in the ocean on a sandy sea floor lived an old mother stingray and her little stingray is four. Stir, said the mother, we stir, said the four. So they stirred with their fins on the sandy sea floor. Over in the ocean where the scuba divers dive lived an old mother puffer and her puffer fish five. Puff, said the mother, we puff, said the five. So they puffed in and out where the scuba divers dive. I told you I've been reading this book a long time. My personal copy is falling apart. Over in the ocean doing somersault tricks lived an old mother dolphin and her little dolphin six. Jump, said the mother. We jump, said the six. So they jumped and they played doing somersault tricks. Look at those beautiful dolphins. I've been trying to watch while we've been here to see if I can see dolphins and I haven't seen any yet. I suspect it's because I like to sleep in in the morning. Mm -hmm. Over in the ocean, in their sea fan heaven, lived a mother angel fish and her little angel seven. Graze, said the mother. We graze, said the seven. So they lazed and they grazed in their sea fan heaven. Over in the ocean, very streamlined and straight, lived a mother needlefish and her needlefish eight. Skitter, said the mother. We skitter, said the eight. So they skittered through the water, very streamlined and straight. Do you have any guesses what skitter might mean based on that? I think it's a way of moving through the water. Yeah. Over in the ocean, drifting in a yellow line, lived an old mother gruntfish and her little grunts nine. Grunt, said the mother. We grunt, said the nine. So they grunted and they kissed, drifting in a yellow line. Oh, look at them giving kisses. There's lots of beautiful different types of coral in this one. Over in the ocean, in their turtle grass den, lived an old father seahorse and his little, and his seahorses, 10. We made it all the way to 10. Flutter, said the father. We flutter, said the 10. So they fluttered all around in their turtle grass den. Over in the ocean where the sea creatures play, while their parents were all resting, they up and swam away. Find us, said the children, from 10 to one, when you find all the creatures, then this rhyme is done. So if you were reading this one at home, this would be a fun little snuggle up time where you could look for all of the creatures on this page. I could show you, but it would take us too long to be able to find them all this way. Yeah. But look at all of those beautiful clay artwork. Isn't it just gorgeous? And at the end, it has the tune for the song. It has information about the babies, about the coral reef, about the animals, and information from the author and the illustrator. This is one of my favorite things. I love seeing how she creates that artwork. You did a fantastic job. I just did two pretty long books back to back. Well, I have another one that I'm gonna do, and it also involves counting, just like our over in the ocean was counting up to 10. So in the middle, we are going to go ahead and do our one from the left. So get your fingers ready. Are they ready to dance? Are you sure? All right. I'm just gonna go ahead and sing it. I know it's better with the music because that music's really cute, isn't it? If you wanna do it with the music, you can go back and do last week's story time and do that part. I wouldn't blame you at all. Are you ready? Okay, remember this one's from Jim Gill and he said we can use any of his music however we would like. Let's start with our hands behind our backs. Ready? And we're gonna pull one finger up from the left. Ready? One from the left and one from the right. They met in the middle and danced all night. They made up a dance called whoop-de-doo. Then they said goodbye and walked away those two so we brought one up from the left and one up from the right and that gave us how many was it again one two good job all right let's try it what after that we're gonna pull up two from each side ready two from the left and 
two from the right. They met in the middle and danced all night. They made up a dance called Snips Galore, like scissors. Do you see it? Then they said goodbye and walked away. Those four. All right, now we're gonna do three and three. Three from the left and three from the right. They met in the middle and danced all night. They made up a dance called Finger Mix. Good job. Then they said goodbye and walked away. Those six. Oh, we've done one, two, three. Four from the left and four from the right. They met in the middle and danced all night. Did you see the birds? That's so fun. Oh, what did they, what dance did they do? Oh, Bend and Street. Good job. Thanks for remembering. Then they said goodbye and walked away. Those eight. Good job. I always say I have the attention span of a two-year-old. That's what makes me good at this. All right, we're going to do our whole hand. How many fingers do you have on your hand? Let's double check. Ready? One, two, three, four, five. Okay, ready? Five from the left and five from the right. They met in the middle and danced all night. They made up a dance called clap and clap and clap and clap again. Then they said goodbye and walked away all ten. You did such a great job. Aren't you glad that you're not on the floor above me or below me having to listen to my story time out on the balcony? <laughs> All right. I wasn't feeling too self-conscious until I started doing the song out here. Well, I wanted to do another story. It's one of my favorite stories to do, but guess what happened? I was pulling my books to pack them, and one of my kids, I won't say who, really, forgot to put one of our favorite books with the other books because she was too busy reading it. Now I'm okay with her reading my books, but I wanted to bring this one. So since I don't have the book with me, I made up a new yoga story. And this book is called The Pout Pout Fish. Do you know The Pout Pout Fish? Oh, it's gonna have some parts that you can do with me um, I want you to do all of the yoga along with me and you can say the refrain over and over again with me as we do it. I am really excited about this and a little bit nervous. I'm not going to do yoga out here on the balcony though, but we're going to move inside for just a minute. Okay, friends, so we're going to try a yoga story. I have not yet been brave enough to try a yoga story on our virtual videos because well, honestly, it's just better when you're doing it along with me and I don't really want to have to look at this for the rest of my life, but we'll pull it down later. Okay, so I want you to see if you can get, oh, see if you can do a nice crisscross applesauce. Sit nice and tall into your back and we're going to see how this goes. Okay, I am obviously not a yogi. I'm not a professional yoga instructor. They do a lot of training to do this. We're just gonna do some really simple poses that my kids like to do with me because yoga is one of the fun ways that we can exercise at home in the safety of our living rooms. And I thought you might enjoy doing it together. All right, this story is the pout pout fish. And every time we talk about the pout pout fish, we are going to get a little droopier and a little droopier and a little droopier. Okay, are you ready? Um, now, when we're the pout pout fish, we're going to stretch our fins way out. So see if you can stretch your legs. Oh, I bet you could stretch them farther than me. Good job. Okay, ready? Deep in the water where the fish hang out lives a glum, gloomy swimmer with an ever-present pout. Can you make a pouty face? Okay. Oh, I'm a pout pout fish with a pout pout face. So I spread the dreary wearies all over the place. Right, now this time we're gonna say blub three times 
and we're going to get lower and lower every time. Are you ready? Blub, blub, blub. Now I bet you can stretch a lot farther down than I can. Can you get all the way down to the ground on the blub? Just stretch however far feels comfortable right here and with your back, okay? All right, now we're going to do our next pose. We're going to meet a few of Pout Pout Fish's friends. And the first one is going to be a clam. So we are going to bring our feet together to meet in the middle. And we're going to have our knees try to go down to touch the ground. This is called butterfly pose, but we're gonna use it as a clam pose. Are you ready? Along comes a clam with a wide winning grin and a pearl of advice for her friend to take in. Hey, Mr. Fish, with your crosstown frown, don't you think it's time to turn it upside down? Says the fish to his friend. Nice thought, Mrs. Clam. Are you ready to go back to being the pout pout fish? Put him back out, good job. I hear what you're saying, but it's just the way I am. I'm a pout pout fish with a pout pout face. So I spread the dreary wearies all over the place. Ready? Blub, blub, blub. Good job. You could probably go farther than you did last time. Yeah, because we're getting warmed up now. Okay, now we're gonna have another friend to come visit. And this is the jellyfish. So this one might be a little tricky. We're going to stand on one foot. I don't know if you'll be able to see me. Oh no. Ah. We're gonna stand on one foot, stretch the other foot back and pull both arms up. Ready? Oh no, I can't read my book hold or my text. <laughs> Let's give that a try. I'm sorry, friends. You're doing great though. Ready? Along comes a jellyfish. He floats through the ocean, his tentacles all trailing in a gentle locomotion. Did you trail your tentacle? Good job. We should probably switch and try doing the other one too. Can you lift up the other leg? And trail that tentacle. Good job. Oh goodness. What's that jellyfish say? Hey, Mr. Fish. Oh, with your daily scaly scowl, I wish you wouldn't greet us with a grimace and a growl. Good job. Did you get a good stretch? All right, guess who we are now? We're back to being the pout pout fish. So we're going to sit. Legs way out, good job. Said the fish to his friend, Mr. Jelly, I agree, I'd like to be more friendly, but it isn't up to me. I'm a pout pout fish with a pout pout face, so I spread the dreary wearies all over the place. Ready to stretch? Blob, blob, blob. John. All right. Now this time we're going to stand up nice and tall and we're going to make kind of a squid shape with our body. Okay, let's give that a try. I don't know if you'll be able to see me very well standing up tall. It'll be like last time. Are you ready? Okay. Stand up tall. Support your body. Did you know that anytime we work on these muscles in our core, it helps us to become better writers? It does. That's part of the reason we do these types of things. All right, you ready? I'm going to put my arms up to be the squid. Good job. Along comes a squid, quite a slender, squiggly sight. She is squirmy. She is squelchy. She is slightly impolite. Hey, Mr. Fish, you kaleidoscope of mope. How about a little joy, a little dream, a little hope? Oh, she's not very happy, is she? Ready? Now we're gonna go back to being our pout pout fish. Ready? Said the fish to his friend, Miss Squid, I would try. <sighs> but I haven't any choice. Take a look and you'll see why. I'm a pout pout fish with a pout pout face. So I spread the dreary wearies all over the place. Blub, blub, blub. You are doing great. All right, we're gonna do the octopus now. 
and the octopus pose is that we put both feet together and we stretch our arms to try to get them, ready? Oh, great job. Along comes an octopus with eight great arms covered on the underside with tiny sucker charms. Hey, Mr. Fish, let me tell it to you straight. Your hokey bulky sulking is an unattractive trait. Hmm, it's one of my favorite lines. I love that one. All right, says the fish to his friend. Mr. Ate My Chum, with a mouth like mine, I'm destined to be glum. I'm a pout pout fish with a pout pout face. So I spread the dreary wearies all over the place. Blub, blub, blub. Oh, guess what? We're gonna try to do a fish pose. So we're gonna, you're really not gonna be able to see me for this one. I couldn't figure out a good place to do it. All right, we're gonna lay on our bellies. Ready? And give yourself a fin. Ready? Now along comes a fish in a silent silver shimmer. The gang has never seen before this bright and brilliant swimmer. She approaches Mr. Fish, but instead of saying, hey, she plants a kiss upon his pouch and she quickly swims away. Oh man, that was silly. Okay, we don't greet people with kisses, do we? No, that's not a great choice. No, we wanna check and see if it's okay before we give kisses. All right, now we're gonna be Mr. Fish again, right? Mr. Fish is most astounded. Mr. Fish is just a guest. He is stone-faced like a statue. And then he blinks and speaks at last. My friends, said Mr. Fish, I should have known it all along. I thought that I was pouty, but it turns out I was wrong. I'm a kiss kiss fish with a kiss kiss face for spreading cheery cheeries all over the place. So I'll smooch, 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 smooch. All right. Now, like I said, we probably don't want to go around giving people kisses. No, you can give kisses to the people that live in your house. But aside from the people who live in your house all the time, you should check with a grown-up that's safe to make sure who you're allowed to give kisses to. And even then, you probably still want to ask, okay? Instead, we should probably make him be a smile, smile fish. <laughs> all right, I love pout pout fish, I hope. Our next story today is called One Nighttime Sea. It is another counting book. It's by Deborah Lee Rose, and the pictures are by Steve Jenkins. It's from Scholastic Press as well, because apparently today should have just been sponsored by them. Ready? All night long, while you are asleep, millions of sea creatures move through the deep. One blue whale calf swims close to its mother. Two humpback fathers sing with each other. So we've done one and two. Three white belugas come up for air. Four spider crabs pretend they're not there. Five furry otters rock on the tide. My biggest girl loves otters since they sleep holding hands, which is just so ridiculous like you. It is. Six leafy sea dragons go for a ride. Seven reef lobsters stretch out their legs. Eight coral polyps explode with new eggs. Do you see them exploding with the new eggs? That's pretty cool, isn't it? Let's see. Nine stellar sea lions jostle for turf. That means they try to get somewhere to sit. Mm -hmm. Ten turtle hatchlings plunge into the surf.
Then 10 nimble basket stars spread out their arms. Wait a minute, we just did 10. Guess what? We're gonna count back down now. Nine silky nude branches show off their charms. Eight parrot fish spin a gossamer sack. Seven masked butterflies nibble a snack. Are those butterflies? They're butterfly fish. Six firefly squid do a shimmering dance. So 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5 hungry hammerheads wait for their chance. See those? You know what? We saw a hammerhead shark the other day. A fishing man caught him and then threw him back. It was pretty cool. Four blinking dragonfish lure with their light. Three zebra mores return from the night. Two speedy porpoises wake up to play. And one brand new seal pup discovers the day. Look at that. This has more information about animals at night in the ocean. A lot of Steve Jenkins books have that, the end of the pages. All right, wonderful job. I hope you really liked that one. It reminds me of a song I think we should do called Over in the Ocean. But again, I think it's gonna work a little bit better inside. All right, friends. I wanted to introduce you to a song that you might not know called We Dove in the Ocean. And this song is a little complicated so I like to have usually I do it with a flannel so you can see what animals coming next since I can't do that I made you some beautiful pictures <laughs> and we can go back through it this way all of them are gonna have a hand motion so this one is what animal is that do you know can you tell it's a seahorse and we're gonna pretend it's like a horse horse and we're gonna go for a ride with this one ready we're gonna dive in the ocean. We're gonna put on some goggles and then we're gonna find the animal, ready? We dove in the ocean and this is what we saw. A seahorse, a seahorse going for a ride. Good job. That's like the rains. That's not great, I know. Okay, ready? Let's see what the next one is. <gasps> what is that? Hard to tell, sorry. It's a jellyfish and he's gonna drift with the tide. Are you ready? We dove in the ocean and this is what we saw. A sea or a jellyfish, a jellyfish drifting with the tide. And then we're gonna go back to seahorse going for a ride. Good job, let's see what the next one is. We dove in the ocean and this is what we saw. A crab, a crab, running to the side. It goes fast. <gasps> Floating with the tide. <gasps> Going for a ride. Good job. <gasps> we dove in the ocean and this is what we saw. An octopus, an octopus, trying hard to hide. <gasps> running to the side. Drifting with the tide, going for a ride. Ready? Here's our last one on this one. Do you know what that is? It's an oyster. It has a pearl inside. Are you ready? We dove in the ocean and this is what we saw. An oyster, an oyster with a pearl inside. Trying hard to hide, running to the side. Drifting with the tide and going for a ride. Last one, are you ready? We dove in the ocean and this is what we saw. A shark, a shark, his mouth was open wide. We jumped out of the ocean, his mouth was open wide. 
All right, you did a really good job. I know it's kind of a silly one and my pictures were just, well, they were magnificent. I know. What are some things that you like to do at the ocean? Have you been to the ocean before or to the beach? What are some things you like to do? I love getting to swim in the swimming pool, getting to feel a lot of sunshine, though I do have to use a lot of sunscreen. Yeah, my polka dots are getting really bright. Let's see, I also love going for walks along the beach and we have had so much fun finding seashells this week. Can I show you some of the fun shells we've seen? All right, I thought these were really cool. I found a bunch of them that were small. Oh, sand is falling out of it as I show you. Yeah, see? Oh, probably not. Okay, so I found a bunch of these, which I thought were really fun. Intact, very pretty. We found this one. My, my middle one found this one. I couldn't believe how big it is. Now it's not all the way intact, which means it's not all whole. This part's missing right here. Yeah, there's kind of a big chunk missing. But look at how huge that is. I told my littlest I feel like I'm Moana. Yeah, getting called out to sea. So I thought this was a pretty cool one. I thought you might like it too. And then my biggest girl found one that was very similar, but a little bit smaller. And still, all together, look at that. Now, do you know why these shells are shaped like this? When they have an animal living in them, the animal lives boop, 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 up in here. Yeah, this is somebody's house. Not anymore, is it? No. So, I thought those were pretty cool and I wanted to make sure I showed you. Now, I think we had Oh, I'm making a big mess. Lots of sand over here. That's just part of being at the beach, isn't it? Lots of sand. We also had quite a few like this. And these would have, I think, clams and oyster type things in them. Where they would have two parts boop, that opened and closed. Yeah. Did you know that we even have some shells that you can find Sometimes when the water's low at like Hoover Dam near us, yeah, you can sometimes find, not this big, but you can find seashells over there, which is pretty fun too. All right, I wanted to show you those. I also was thinking that you might like to hear a little bit more about spending time at the beach. So we're gonna do a silly one about Our last story today is another one of my kiddos' favorite stories. We did Moo Ba La 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 by this author last week when we were doing our farm week. This author is Sandra Boynton, and this one is a little less about ocean animals and a little bit about swimmy suits. Are you ready? The Belly Button Book by Sandra Boynton. This one is also well-loved. Yeah. It's by Workman Publishing. This tiny hippopotamus has something small to say. And if we're very quiet now, she'll say it right away. Listen. Beep boop. You may not know what beep boop means, or maybe you've forgotten. It's just the tiny hippo way of saying belly button. Beep boop. Do you have a belly button? Did you bring it to story time? <gasps> Is it ticklish? We hippos love our belly bees. They're round and cute and funny. And there's a place we take them to when summer days are sunny. Come, beep boop. Ah, uh, look at all the hippos with a belly button each. Do you wonder where we are? Where do you think we are? It's Belly Button Beach! Where tons of hippos stand around in bathing suits too little because you hope they will, you will admire the button on their middle. 
We don't do much throughout the day. That's how we like it best. We nibble grapes. We watch the waves. We take a little rest. We always love to get balloons, and I know why. Do you? Boom. Because we like to think that balloons have belly buttons, too. Soon after dark, upon the beach, we sing our favorite song. And if you're feeling in the mood, we hope you'll sing along. <gasps> belly, belly button, you're oh so fine. Oh, belly button, I'm so happy you're mine. <gasps> we sing the song on summer nights or when it's hot outside, but never in cold winter time when belly buttons hide. No, never in cold winter time when belly buttons hide. Bye bye, people. What do you call your belly button? Yeah, we usually just call it belly button. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to think if any of my kids had a fun name for it. I think it was just always belly button. All right, well, I had a couple ideas I thought you might like to do this week. If you can, and if you have time, one of them was to maybe get out some Play-Doh and add some things to it to see if you can create new textures and maybe make a couple of Play-Doh fish. I would love to see what kind of Play-Doh fish you come up with. Sometimes my friends have enjoyed getting out colanders and using those to stamp on a, um, a texture. We've also had fun getting out pieces of netting and roll, pushing that into it to make like a scales texture. We've used uh, silverware and oh, straws. Sometimes I'll add googly eyes if you happen to have any googly eyes at home because that makes uh, Play-Doh fish way cuter. It does. I was also thinking if you wanted, you could draw a picture of fish with crayons and then you can paint over it with blue watercolor and guess what happens to the crayons? If you haven't seen it before, you should give it a try. I'm not going to tell you what happens. Again, I would love to see your pictures. If you want to go ahead and post them in the comments, I would love to see your artwork. I get a lot of my kids' artwork, but I love seeing yours. I miss seeing it. Um, let's see. I was also thinking that if you wanted, it would be a fun week to play in a sandbox or at a sand and water table or even at a water table. Normally, we get out a whole big mess of sand and water, and we have a blast doing that this week. If you don't want to do any sand, there are some great recipes to make kinetic sand, which is a little bit easier to clean up, or you can buy kinetic sand, and that's spelled K-I-N-E-T-I-C, I think, for kinetic. All right, um, I think that's everything I was planning on doing with you this week. If we were at the library, we'd do some fishing with our letter fish and things like that, but I just want you to have fun as a family, enjoy your time together, and how about if you want to, you can write a story about a place you'd like to travel to if you could travel. All right. I hope that you've enjoyed this special on location story time. I hear another helicopter come in, so it's probably time for me to go. I'll talk to you soon. I miss you. Take care of each other. Bye.